Hey Vinyl Community, it's Edwin here, the Pretty Green Vinyl Guy. And uh, today I'm going to be doing a follow-up to my uh, Record Store Day 2, the second drop. This is part 2 of the second drop of Record Store Day, just so we got it all figured out. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, my local stores didn't have very much, so I ended up ordering um, online. Which actually worked out well. Um, I, I suppose with COVID, the stores are actually allowed to sell uh, online once they're past a certain time. So that's good because in previous years, I've, I've wanted something it's impossible to find online. So whatever. Uh, so yeah, some of these are I was excited to get. And um, we'll start with this. This is, is of course, uh, the Fleetwood Mac Rumors. This is the uh, alternative Rumors, as they call it. This is the actual album in its original track listing, but you have alternative versions, you have acoustic, and you have demos. So, and you also have early takes. So you got a variety. Um, I mean, it's it's nice to hear some of the songs differently, of course, because, you know, it's a well-listened-to album. You know, we've we've all heard rumors countless times, and it's nice to hear a new version. As far as uh, no really anything fancy here, just a nice lined inner with a black vinyl with a nice uh, Fleetwood Mac uh, label there. So nothing crazy in the packaging. I would say some of the songs hold up pretty good. Um, actually, I think the one that impressed me, and interestingly, on the original album, it wouldn't be one of my standout tracks, but uh, Oh Daddy is really good. Uh, I Don't Want to Know, uh, uh, Lindsey Buckingham. That's pretty strong. It's, it's, it's raw. You know, it's, you could just close your eyes and think he's standing right here with a, a guitar and playing it. Uh, most of the first side is quite good. I don't like the chain. It's really missing the the team of the band. It's more like a, a, a Stevie Nicks song. Anyway, super happy to get that. I've got most of the other Record Store Day Fleetwood Macs and I'm a, I'm a big fan of all era of Fleetwood Mac and you know love this too. Okay, next we have the Almond Brothers Band at the Fillmore West in San Francisco. Of course with the San Francisco streetcar. You get some nice essay on the inside of the gatefold. Uh, the vinyl is black, but apparently it glows in the dark. With this nice mushroom label. I haven't played it in the dark, so I don't know about the actual glowing ability. Um, you also get a numbered poster. It's a numbered poster, but... Oh yeah, there it is. Well, I'm way at the top of the barrel. 5,590 out of 6,000. And on the inside, as well, this was the bill for the show. So the, the Allman Brothers actually weren't the headliners. Hot Tuna was the headliners. Uh, and then we also had the 24-piece Trinidad Tripoli Steel Band. And I know from watching biographies on uh, Bill Graham, he liked to do that. He liked to throw in these weird bands, right? That And put them all in the same bill. Um, so this album was recorded in 71, uh, January, January 31st, 71. I think it says on the inside they took songs from the weekend of January 28th to the 31st. So right at the start of the year in 71. And of course, by March, on the um, Fillmore East, of course... They recorded this, and uh, so what a difference! You know, here they're opening for Hot Tuna, and by here they're 
you know, national treasures. It's too bad the album, it wouldn't be nice to have some sort of bookend to the photo. You know, I know they, they didn't, obviously didn't plan this photo at the time to be as infamous as it is. But it would have been nice to maybe follow this up with some kind of bookend, you know, rather than the streetcar. And um, as far as the songs go, uh, there's a lot of crossovers. It's not in the same order by any stretch of the imagination, although it does start with States Rural Blues uh, on both albums, and it does end with Whipping Post on both albums. But there's some, there's some missing and some uh, different songs. I would say the runtime is probably pretty close to the same. Um, yeah, I mean, is it this? No, it's not. But, if, you know, if you're a fan of the Allman Brothers or, you know, rock blues, uh, this is a nice piece to have. And obviously they ain't make, making them like this anymore, so it was definitely a worthwhile pickup. So, yeah. And then this I haven't listened to yet. This is Door Door. And this one kind of, I missed on the first go around because I just, I forgot. I forgot that Nick Cave was in a band called Door Door out of Melbourne uh, before he became uh, better known as Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Uh, File Under the Boys Next Door, Door Door. Um, this is a 40th anniversary of the original release. It's on uh, red vinyl and a paper sleeve, so it's all staticky. Um, ay, ay, ay. Why? Why do you do this? But anyway, uh, I am familiar with the the single, if you want to call it the single, Shivers. And uh, I don't know much about the rest of it, but I am super excited to have Dordor -Dor in, um, in my collection. Now these two I'm super... Actually, no, let's go here first. This one was not on my radar at all. This is Lee Fields' uh, Let's Get a Groove On. This was actually in my, uh, the used bin at my record store. So either someone bought this on record store day and they decided they didn't like it and brought it back to the store or the owner opened it, played it, and decided, you know, that was fine and then and sold it. I didn't ask, but it was $16.99. And I figured for $16.99, and knowing that it was probably around $30, bucks, like two days prior, and seeing that other people were praising this uh, on YouTube, I was like, yeah, I'm totally in. So Lee Fields is uh, very James Brown. If you like James Brown, you're going to like uh, Lee Fields. It's on this cool splatter clear vinyl record. Uh, sounds really good. Really gets you going. Got the funk. And I meant to Google him and find out a little bit more about him. But what I've heard and what I've sort of gone by on this on this album, uh, really good. Really, really good. I guess this is the first um, repress of this from the original. And it became kind of a rare find. And so it's the kind of thing you want on Record Store Day. A rare album that you're never going to be able to find or afford. To have a come back out so I'm happy I got that. And then the last two are uh, two that I wanted. This one in particular uh, was definitely a go and um, this was an album very close to my heart when I was a kid and this are two-tone. This was a comp made by the two-tone label, actually Chrysalis Records because they were actually the parent company when Jerry Dammers from the specials signed the specials to Chrysalis, he also negotiated a label, which is very clever. And he started the two-tone uh, label. And um, he, I think he contractually wanted something like eight albums and 16 singles. I think it was something like that. And that all happened, more or less. And then there was a couple of flops. I can't remember who the flops were, but Chrysalis all of a sudden started losing money. Something that started quite on a strong trajectory. 
um, ended up costing them money. Uh, I know Jerry Dammers did a kind of a jazzy bossa nova style album, which you know did not connect to the mods and the and the the you know the people that were eating this stuff up. And um, so in a in a um, in a move to save the two tone label, Chrysalis put this comp out. So this was a later comp. These songs had all been around by this time. Um, I think this came out in 83. Yeah, May 83. And I think the first Specials album came out in mm, probably 79. So, you know, um, A Message to You, Rudy, for example, was four years old at this, at this time. Um, but this was done well. This, the, whoever put this comp together hit some of the key songs, but also hit some not so well known ska songs. And um, we got this very nice comp. I remember I used to spend my summers as a teenager back in Belfast. I was born in Belfast and my parents and I moved to Canada. I used to go home and stay with my grandfather and I had a couple of cousins that were kind of into all the different scenes. And I remember that particular summer of 83, they were really into the two-tone label. And I remember I brought that the cassette of this back to Canada. No one, there was no two-tone in Canada uh, at that point. It was it was not uh, on anyone's radar. And um, I played this tape to death. I love this tape. And maybe it was a bit nostalgic, a bit memory. So I was really excited that I saw this coming out for Record Store Day. So um, you've got the uh, classic, and I've noticed now a lot of these uh, albums I saw Jamie Cottle did a uh, the first, what is it, seven albums on two-tone. There's a new CD box set. And I've noticed uh, the specials debut and more specials, which I'm really wanting to get, have been uh, remastered in uh, 45 RPM, which I'm not super excited about that because you have to change it every two songs and flip your record. Uh, got the classic two-tone label. The... Um, the logo, by the way, was based on a was based on an early photo of Peter Tosh, a young Peter Tosh, and that's how they drew the label uh, from that. But this is great stuff. This has got a lot of great bands. You've got, of course, the Specials. You've got Madness. You've got the Selector. You've got the Beat, otherwise known as the English Beat. Uh, you got the Body Snatchers. You got Rico. Um, the Swinging Cats, great, great ska, great album, very cool. And another album on the same level. Oh yeah, these came with these kind of obies, which is kind of cool. Uh, this was Dance Craze. This was, uh, this was a very sought after movie when I was in high school. Like everyone wanted to, oh, have you seen Dance Craze? It's so cool. And, um, same getup, same inner sleeve. Same two-tone label, 180 gram vinyl. They sound great. Again, this was a, a live concert footage, also featuring the specials, the beat, Bad Manners. If you haven't heard Bad Manners, highly recommend Bad Manners. Um, the Body Snatchers again, Madness. Madness had a uh, <clears throat> One Step Beyond a Nightboat to Cairo. Had, what a great, great song. Um, yeah, so Dance Craze. So yeah. That was my second installment of Record Store Day Drop 2, Video 2. So there you go. So I guess now we just have to look forward to Drop 3. And um, But guys, there's so much exciting vinyl coming out. I was like, man, I guess just for... Put the money away. But um, yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all doing well. And uh, peace out. Pretty green vinyl guy.